So, there are your homework answers. So take a look at those and see if you have any questions. Because 121 divided by 11 is 11. 136 divided by 11 is 12. You know, the idea of having tiny pieces on your teeth is, 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 is weird. Terrifying. Well, and um, it's not that terrifying. Frustrating. I got a number of Okay. Same question for you. You know where you messed it up? Good. Look at it and see if you can find where you made a mistake. I did finish pre-reduce. Okay. So, did you get something much larger than this? That may, and, and you maybe just didn't reduce at the end either? Uh, Dad checked it on the calculator and he said it was right. It probably <laughs> was numerically right. It also probably wasn't reduced all the way. You probably got the right answer, just not finished reducing, if I had to guess. Like, so did you you didn't did you so did y'all reduce these at all 121 and 136 or did you leave them big okay so let's walk through it that way if you left them big didn't restart this didn't I yes okay so did you get eight and four excuse me eight and four eight and eleven here yeah. Okay. Um, first, I draw it 16 and 22. And then 8 and 11, right? Okay, good. So you got that. So you, so then you did 136 times 8. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And 11 times 121. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's let's do it that way and let's check it. So 136 times 8, 8 times 6 is 8, eight times 6 is 48. 48. 8 times 3 is 24. Plus 4, 28. And then 8 times 1. Plus two, ten. ten. Okay, so that would be on the top of the fraction. I'm just going to leave that there for now. And then we would have done 121 times 11, right? That's what you did for the denominator part? Yeah. Okay, so this one's easy, right? One times one is one, one times two is two, one times one is one. We put a zero and then one, two, one again, right? And then we add those up. One plus zero is one. Two plus one is two. One plus two is two. And one plus nothing is still one. Right? So we have 1,088 over 1,221. Two plus one is three. How about three? I was just testing you. Good job. I'm so proud. <laughs> I feel, I'm sure you feel very confident. <coughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. Now, this reduces. So, if you don't see right away what this reduces by, we got to start guessing some stuff. So, what do we want to try dividing by? Okay, now I do. <laughs> 72. Yeah. 72. Sure. 72 into 1,088. 72 goes into 108. How many times? Once. Once. One time 72 is 72. We subtract, and what do we end up with? Mm, no, I don't think so. What's 8 minus 2? Thank you. 
You're good. What's 8 minus 2? 6. six. And then 10 minus 7? Bring down the 8. Or we want to multiply 72 times. Sure, why not? 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 7 is 35, plus 1 is 36. Look at that. But it's not its not the same as that, so it doesn't reduce by 72. Good try, but no. What else do you want to try? I want smaller things, y'all. That's Not only is that not smaller, it doesn't make sense. Make something smaller. 78. <laughs> smaller than some others. <laughs> yes, we can. Yes, it is. You're weird. Pick something between 2 and 20. Something smaller. 70, <laughs> This coffee is hot. Throw it at your face. It was at one point a Pac Man mug. Pick something. Wait, it is a Pac Man Yeah, it just got put in the dishwasher or the microwave. And so it's a dilapidated Pac Man mug. 71.20. Guys, I'm done playing. Six. Thank you. Okay. Pick six. Sounds just fine. Uh, that's like a glow-in-the-dark thingy. It's not dishwasher safe. Okay, so six into 1,000. Um, what's the rule for sixes? N divisible by three. What's one plus eight plus eight? 17. 17. 17 divisible by six? Not going to work. Okay, so pick something else. 18 is between one or between 2 and 20. All right, 18. Off the rule path, which is fine. Doesn't go into that, so what are we going to try to get it into 108? Sure. 18, well, it's not going to be 11. It's got to be between 1 and 9, right? Eight times eight is what? 64. 64. Eight times one is? Eight. Eight plus six? Fourteen. Fourteen. Too big. Try something else. It's got to be between one and nine. It has to be. Because if it was bigger than that, then it would go into this number instead. One. Definitely not one. Sure. 8 times 6? 48. 6 times 1? 6 plus 4 is 10. Oh, it worked. 6. 108. Whoops. Minus. Gives us 0. Bring down the 8. But 18. That's a arrow thing. OMG. You're just making it worse. No, stop. I'm just making it thicker. <laughs> 18 doesn't go into 8, so that didn't work. So what do we what do we want to try instead? No, other way around. Always this one and this one into that. That's how we that's how we always do it. What else do we want to try? Go back and look at your divisibility rules. Pick one of those and let's use the divisibility rules. See if we can make our life easier. You should probably copy them down from somebody at some point. You know what I mean, Jelly Bane? 
if you if you don't want to stay and do it from one of your neighbors, if you okay. will remember to um, get your mom to send me a message, I can email you a link to my notes on the divisibility rules, and then you can copy it from there. Eight. What's the rule for eight? The last three digits. Last three divisions. They are, so let's do eight. But let's check these these first. Are, is 331 divisible by 8? Because they would have to both be divisible by 8. So that doesn't work. That's good. So the top one is, but the bottom one's not. Good thinking. 4? So what's the rule for 4? Okay, so these are divisible by 4. Are these divisible by 4? No. No, okay, so the same problem as 8. So the top one works. It's divisible by 4. But the bottom one's not. That's what I'm saying. This is divisible by 4. This is not. They have to both be, right? Because we're trying to reduce here. It's divisible by something. <laughs> Definitely not five, because the rule for five is it has to end in zero or five. Oh, yeah. Right? Four. We, just we said four. four. We said four and we said eight. Let's walk through them all. Are they both divisible by two? Yes or no? No. No, why not? Yeah, because the bottom one's not even, right? Are they divisible? Is it divisible by three? No. Is it divisible by four? Top one is, bottom one is. We already did that. Five, neither one, right? We already did that. Six. No, we already looked at that rule. Okay, so what about seven? What's the rule for seven? Okay, so what does that mean? If we want to check 1,000, I, if we want to check 1,088, how do we check if it's divisible by 7? So what do we do first? Okay, double last there. What's eight doubles? Sixteen. And then what? Made by a hundred and eight. Okay. Quizzical. What's eight minus six? Two. Ten minus one. Nine. Nine. Does seven go into ninety-two? Does it? What's seven times ten? Seventy. What's seven times se well eleven? Seventy-seven. What's seven times twelve? I think it's eighty-four, isn't it? What's well, 84 plus 7? Not 92? Yes, no, maybe, yes. Okay, so it's not divisible by 7. So we already figured out 8. 8 doesn't work because their bottom one's not. So 9, what's the rule for 9s? Um, it is not. So one plus eight, one plus eight plus eight is seventeen, which is not divisible by nine. Okay, it's not nine. Is it divisible by ten? No. No. Is it divisible by eleven? How do you know? What's the rule for elevens? Add, subtract the digits in an alternating order, and the result must be divisible. So one plus zero 
minus 8 plus 8. Or did I do that wrong? I think it's minus, yes, and then plus. Yes. Yeah, minus, plus, minus. It should be divisible by 11. Why is it not divisible by 11? It's not. <gasps> did I break? Did I make this problem wrong? Were y'all right all along? <gasps> oh no, what did I do? Everything. Oh no! 136 is not divisible by 11. Yeah, no kidding! <laughs> Hilarious. It doesn't work. What did I do? Where did I get 136 from? One hundred and twenty one plus eleven. It's because of the service project. I should have been one hundred and thirty two. Why did I write one hundred and thirty six? <laughs> Okay, so that means that y'all got it right. Woo! Those of you who got 1,088 over 1,331. That's what happens when you try to do things quickly in your head, boys and girls. You should you should learn a good lesson from that. Even teachers even teachers make mistakes when they make when they do math quickly in their head. The moral of the story is write it down. Is this a cautionary tale? This is a cautionary tale. The answer I got when I did the final was 272 over 341. I don't know how you did that. I don't know how that happened. Okay. All right. Let us move on to today's review bit. This is going to start out nice and easy. I'm not hard of hearing. I just can't hear very well. Huh. <laughs> what? what is that literally what you're saying? <laughs> I woke up in my ear. I just couldn't hear that in my ear. Oh, okay. So Drainage. <laughs> ear stoppy. How wooed. I asked that because my mom was. How wooed. Okay. We're going to do one step. Nice. Equations. I don't know. I have to kind of stop numbering. All of them. Just, just put what we're doing now. Right now we're in review, so if you want to do R.7 or so, that would probably be right. I've stopped numbering this lessons and just titled them. In this particular class. Next year that will probably be different, but... We are. You excited? You love that? Okay. Jump in with some examples. How's that sound? What? It's windy outside, isn't it? It's not cold. I'm sick of Here's what I want you to focus on on these, these problems today, on one-step equations. I want you to focus on showing all of your work and doing your intermediate steps in a different color. Those are the things that I want you to work on today. Show all your work, including intermediate steps. We're going to walk through one or two together, so you're good. Okay. So we follow three and a half steps every time. Okay. First half step is clean up. Right. We're not worried about that most of the time right now. Then after that, we ask what's attached to the variable, how's it attached, and we do the inverse or the opposite to get rid of it. Right? So what is attached to the variable right now? What? 
That's how it's attached, but what is it? It's a five, right? Right? The five is attached through times. So how do we get rid of it? What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So we're going to divide five on both sides. I also want to make want you to make sure you're writing your division like a fraction like this. <clears throat> because it's going to make stuff easier later. Yes, ma'am. That's that's what we're doing. So all that's left on the left side is X, right? What's negative 30 divided by 5? 6. Negative 6, right? Because the signs are different. What are you crying about? I just couldn't get my pencil up. I'm like, dang, it right off the sensor. Ah. All right, let's do another one together, and then we'll do a couple of guided practicing ones. Number two. Let's do y minus 8 equals 34. So we look for cleanup, but there's not going to be any in this for now, right? So then we ask what's attached, how's it attached, and do the opposite to get rid of it. So what's attached to the Y? No. Eight is. And how is it attached? By subtraction, right? Adding a negative. So how do we get rid of it? Adding. So we add eight to both sides. Those cancel out, right? Leaving us with y equals 34 plus 8. Scratch paper if you need to. Forty-two. All right, let's do a couple of guided practicing ones. Return of the what? Uh, maybe. Oh, a scaredy. For I, I didn't remember for a minute what you were talking about, but then I did. Guided practice. It means you're going to do it by yourself. Until I unfreeze, and then if you're not finished, you're going to copy it down. Because I'm going to guide you when we come back. My friend was reading a book to the small children. It was like little critter distress, and it was sad that all little children died eggs. But she read it, and all the little children died eggs. But she had a very long pause, and then it was very odd. That's hilarious. And you know what? It's so easy. Number one is a little sneaky, so be careful. Oh, that's so scary. Why is it scary? You're not being stupid. Okay, ready, set, go. Unpause. It's okay. You're good. You probably did something wrong on your multiplication step. I did it. I did it wrong with the most of my age. Yeah, that's, but then you multiplied 3 times 18 and you got 36. So you did something wrong on your multiplication part, I think. Okay, so let's do these together. Or examples possible. Okay, so if there's not a number written right here, what number is there? One, that's right. So that one, negative one is multiplied times the P, so how are we going to get rid of it? Gonna division, gonna division it, <laughs> gonna divide it, 
We're going to divide both sides by negative 1. You can if you want to. You don't have to, but you can. So these cancel, right? Leaving us with just a P all by his lonesome. And then what's 15 divided by negative 1? Negative, right? Because the signs are different. So negative 15. Okay, so let's look at this one. So how is that negative 3 attached to the cube? Is it added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided? <laughs> it's divided, so how are we going to get rid of it? Multiplication. So we're going to multiply times negative 3. Right? So those cancel out, leaving us with just a cube. Equals what's 5 times negative 3? Negative 15. All by their lonesomeness. They're separated by the chasm of the equals. All right, let's do a couple of GPs. No, not jippies. <laughs> Guided practices. Let's do... What shall we do? Let's do 4L equals 2. And for guided practice number 4, what? Oh, cool. Number 4 is going to be... <coughs> C over 15 equals 8. Ready, go. Unpause and freeze. <laughs> I love those faces, those are wonderful. Because we're dividing 4 on both sides, what is 2 divided by 4? You can't do that. Yes, you can. You get a fraction. What can you reduce by? That's why I want you to write division like that, because it shows you right there what it is. We can reduce by 2. What's 2 divided by 2? 2. 2 divided by 2. 1. 4 divided by 2? 2. Two. Two. One half. I thought I was so smart for getting it right. Did you get two? Right yeah. I told you you could do something wrong on accident if you weren't paying attention. We're dividing by four, not dividing by two. No. You're doing two divided by four, which is a fraction. And then you reduce that fraction if you can. What's, what's wrong with your brain? Are you actually confused on this problem still, or, or are, you just being, are you just being crazy? Because if you are confused, let's, let's deal with it, because that we can fix. Okay, which part, on, which part on this one problem? What is, what is this? What did I just write? I, it's all, what else did I write? How else could we name that? Two over four, two over four or two-fourths, right? 
What's two fourths? A what? It's a fraction. Is that cleared up? Good job. Virtual high five. Way to ask a question. Yes, ma'am. You're talking about the example? Yeah. So this one. Yeah. Okay. It was a fraction. They're all fractions. Every time we divide, it's a fraction. It's 15 over negative 1. It does. All of these numbers are fractions. This number is a fraction. If I wanted to write that like a fraction, what would I put in the denominator? 1. But I don't need the 1 there, right, when it's a 1. So if it's not a 1, it has to stay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's do another couple. Number four was 120. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Number five. You talking about example three? What are you talking about? Okay, good. This so guided practice one. Okay. You look at how it's attached. This one is adding a negative. What's adding a negative the same as? Yes. Subtracting. So what's the opposite of subtracting? Adding. So we added six. You want to think you want another way to think about it that may that may be more useful is we're trying to make this number go away. So negative six plus six makes it go away. If we had subtracted six, negative six minus six is negative twelve. And negative twelve has not gone away, it's worse. <laughs> does that make sense? Does that help any? Kind of. Okay, well, we're going to get lots more practice. Let's, let's do another one together. Okay. Now, we got a fraction. Three fifths B equals negative 15. How is that three fifths attached to the B? Is it added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided, or something else? If we've got a number right next to a variable, what is that? Yeah. Multiplication. So how do we get rid of it? Division. Division. Now, next question. And what's the opposite of division? No, not that. How do we divide fractions? Do y'all remember? Like if I write, we did this like just last class. If I wrote three-fifths divided by... Two thirds, what would I do? Flip the second one and multiply. Or flip the bottom one. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. Because that's, that's dividing fractions, right? If I do it to that side, I got to do it to this other side too. But I thought you just multiply by We're going to get rid of the whole fraction. We're getting rid of this whole thing. If you're t if it's multiplying a fraction here, because that's how we get rid of it. So if it looks like this, you multiply by the reciprocal. We'll do more examples. Let's let's do this one. 
This side cancels, right? This side, I bet we can do some pre-reducing. What do you want to bet? If I was going to write this negative 15 as a fraction, what would I need to do with it? Put it over a 1. Put it over a 1. That sounds great. Can I do some pre-reducing? Three and fifteen. What goes into three and fifteen? It's three, but I think you mean the right thing. Yes, three divided by three is what? One. What's fifteen divided by three? I said focus. I multiplied by five thirds, right? So now we're pre-reduced as far as we can go. What's negative five times five? Five. Negative 25 over what's one times one? One. Now we don't need that one, so what's my final answer? Negative 25. Negative 25. Okay, let's do another example. We may we may squeeze in four examples before the guided practices. Let's do negative. <coughs> uh, three eighths D equals positive It is a cursive letter, kind of. It doesn't. It doesn't have the loop. But it's still a cursive letter. That is one way to write D in cursive. The thing about cursive is there's uh, many letters, there's multiple ways to write it. Either way, it's a D. Okay. What am I doing? I am writing, uh, let's see, what do I want? I want 15 sixteenths. So, that negative 3 eighths, how is it attached to the D? Is it added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided? It's multiplied. So how do I get rid of it? Division, how do I divide fractions? And multiply, we multiply by the reciprocal, right? Negative 3 eighths. Oh. It is eight thirds. Y'all are right. Oh my gosh. Shock and awe. So on this side, it just all cancels, right? On the other side, let's see if we can pre reduce. Is there anything we can pre reduce? What goes into 15 and 3? It did just do, yeah. What goes into 16 and 8? 8 does. 8 divided by 8 is 1. So a positive times a negative gives us a what? A negative. So negative, 5 times 1 is? Five. Two times one is two. Now, at this point in our math career, we don't like improper fractions, right? So how do we get in, turn it into a mixed number? But what are you doing in your brain? You are dividing. Two goes into five, how many times? 
Twice, two times two is four. Five minus four is one. So D equals what? Negative two and a half, right? Don't forget to bring that negative down. I've told pretty much all of my classes this on repeat at this point, and I will continue to say the same words. One of the easiest places to make a little tiny mistake that's just a careless mistake that could later ruin your whole problem is on your signs. So watch your signs. Pay very close attention to them because they like to be even more sneaky than I do. So watch your signs. Let's do a couple more. Gosh, that gold and yellow is horrifically ugly together, but oh well. Oh well. Oh well indeed. Number seven. I mean, no, without, not all equations can be beautiful. It's probably true. <clears throat> Let's do 15. Uh, over how about 49 I did say that and we're and we're no I just haven't done it yet <laughs> equals 20 over uh, let's say 14. So what am I going to do, boys and girls? That's right. Flip which one? I agree. So M equals, can I pre-reduce? 15 and 20. What goes into 15 and 20? 5. Oops. What's 15 divided by 5? What 20 divided by 5. And what goes into 14 and 49? Seven does. Fourteen divided by seven. Forty-nine divided by seven. Can I do any more or reduce it? I can. Two times seven is what? What? Hey, oh, <laughs> two times seven is what? Fourteen. One times three is what? Three. Three. We've got to convert that to a mixed number. Three into fourteen. Three goes into fourteen how many times? What's four times three? It is 12. What's 14 minus 12? 2. Two. You're right. So M equals. What? 4 and 2 thirds. Let's write down our homework and then it's going to be time to go. What am I doing? Good question. Good answer. Number one. Four X equals 
Uh, let's say 80. Number two. What? At least six, maybe more. Y plus 18 equals negative 12. Right. And number one is that X? It is an X. That is an X. That's why I write cursive X's. But I mean, no offense, but your handwriting is so questionable we can't always tell. Like, you can't tell if you, if you meant to do Every time, without fail. Someone uses the words, no offense. What they really mean is offense. Now, moving on. Negative. Eight. Plus Z. My handwriting on this program is not as good as typical. That is, is more or less true, especially threes. I don't know why threes give me so much trouble on this program, but they do. Eight. One Number four. With, like solid, like exceptional. Character. Oh, girl, I can I can write you under the bus. Well, I know that. <laughs> I'm not saying that I think better than that, but on programs like this, that's see, that's fail. that's probably true. Okay, where am I? What do I say? How about a? Usually, English teachers are worse. A over negative five equals seventy-two. Token 72. Number five is three <laughs> thirds B equals negative eight plus one. I said it was a one-step equation, didn't I? Make it, make it not a lie. Okay. Um, next one is going to be, how about 12 121sts? Let's try this again. C equals 30. Let's add some negatives. Try, try for something better. Negative 36 over 132, not 136. Good message. Always something. Number seven. Seven. I said at least. Negative one eight D equals negative 12. Everybody's favorite twelves, and let's do number eight as something nice and fun. Let's sneak a two-stepper in here. That's a sneaky two-stepper for next lesson. Negative two minus e equals negative five. So there you go. There's your homework. Once you get those copied, you can leave. What? Take your time and do it well. See you later. There's at least one that's very easy. And none of them are honestly all that difficult. Which means that you should slow down on them. Because these ones won't take you very long. The easiest one is number five. Number five is a dumb problem. It makes me laugh.